Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to No Man's Sky, shall we? Alright, so we are on our starter world, and as far as the law goes, they want us to establish and construct a base. So we do have the base computer uh, already built, I believe, uh, or we have the technology to do it because we have all of this chromatic metal. So we can just go to the build menu and we can build a base computer uh, for three chromatic or 30 chromatic metal. But I don't want to do that here because, as I said, I don't like this world. It is hostile. So I'm going to actually take us up in the ship. I'm going to launch up. And I'm going to go out to space. And now we've been out here before, but I'm just holding R2 and circle together to really get a good boost. And the base computer claims a site for construction. Find a suitable area and deploy the base computer. And I want to find a more suitable area that's potentially less dangerous. So if I look at this world over here, uh, you know, there's the possibility that that's a world that we want to go to. And... Can I see anything else right now? Not from this side. So let's just fly toward this planet that we saw over here. Or it could be a moon, to be honest. I'm just going to right the old ship. And where was that? It was in my field of vision at one point. All right, here it is. So I'm going to just hold R1 to kind of straighten out. And then I'm going to point right at this. And I'm going to hold L1 and R1 together to engage the pulse drive. And I can scan this unknown planet by pushing L3 once I'm flying to it. And it's a desert planet. And it's got copper, pyrite, and magnetized ferrite. Now, I'm going to keep charging right at this planet. And you'll see that we'll arrive in 12, 11, 10 seconds going really, really fast toward this thing. We have plenty of pulse drive to get here because I recharged it so it's all full and let's just see what this world is like and we are in suborbital flight and we're just kind of flying straight down to the surface of this planet and I'm going to kind of just level out and just pick a spot I'm going to hold L2 to slow down Sometimes you can see uh, cool things from above. Uh, that looks like, yeah, there's a space station right here. So, not a space station, that's the wrong way to phrase that. This is just somebody's settlement. And with this settlement, you see those blue rings over to the left of this little development here? That's like a landing pad. So we can just land there automatically. If we get anywhere near this, um, we can just push... Uh, square and land right here and then also we can use this device to recall our ship if we like uh, and maybe we didn't actually land automatically there but what this means is where is it here we go this it was indicating that you can call your starship with this so it doesn't guide you in but if you lose your ship and you have one navigation data you can just hold square to get your ship back. And it could be, you know, really far away. Now, this says it's a desert planet, but it's actually freezing. Uh, so we see very quickly, now that we get here, that this planet is really, really cold. So our thermal protection had to turn on. I'm going to go ahead and just activate this waypoint. I'm going to open all these chests and just pick up whatever resources I can get. We got navigation data right there. Uh, I'm going to take this rusted metal. Just put it in my exosuit for now. And um, let me see. Did we just get... No, no, no. I thought it said for some reason that we got an Atlas Pass. Um, we got a Corvac casing. So this Corvac casing... Uh, you see how it's worth 22000 It's extremely valuable. You can sell it, or you can give it to a Korvac alien. Um, and 
get like faction with them. They respect a gift. Okay, yeah, no, it was just saying Atlas Pass required because I tried to search that. I was like, what? Yeah, no, no, no. You're not that lucky. The Atlas Pass doesn't come that simply. Now, we can go check these buildings out, see if there's anything in here. And, well, we got a lot of money, which is nice. Anything else in this little shelter? Remember, too, when you go inside these buildings, uh, they will give you hazard protection. And, oh, here's some nanites. That's great. All right. We got 46 out of that. That's terrific. And uh, not much else. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Encrypted navigation data. Pick that up, and we got a nav data. All right, cool. Now, there's also a larger section of this base over here. And I'm just going to kind of rocket towards this. And whenever you see the base door open... Oh, no, good. It's not. Okay. Let's see what's in here. I'm just going to go in the front door. And, yeah, there's somebody in here. So, there is uh, this dude who's chilling. And he's kind of, like, operating here. This is his station. Now, you're free to come in and really take whatever you want. They don't mind. And you can talk to this prefect... Uh, Wase Onagupu, and just hold square to talk to this guy. The warrior's nostrils flare as I approach. They inhale deeply, tasting the desert air that has followed me in to this once sterile facility. Uh-oh, he might be upset. They bark out what could be a warning. I hurriedly mime that I am peaceful and know little of their kind or language. And so this is what the conversation is like. He's going to say a bunch of words... And I'm not going to know it. Now, this is a warrior dude. This is a Viking. And the only words that I know in Viking are Viking and interloper. And so you can see, if you do know a word, it will appear translated for you. Otherwise, we don't know. And they take a quick second to think, then grab my multi-tool while barking again into my visor, streaking it with saliva. They point at the mining beam, charge indicator, then at my backpack. I do my best to keep calm. So he's pointing at the multi-beam's charge indicator. Well, we know that we can charge the multi-tool with carbon, but you have to kind of see what you should give this guy. I'm going to give him carbon. Sodium is for my has protection. Metal um, is for building. So I'm going to see what happens here. And he grunts in satisfaction, impressed by both my gift and my understanding. They teach me several new words of their language. So maybe he was like, hey, my multi-tool, like his multi-tool is out of charge. He wants to charge it. And if you get it right, you see he's like happy. He gives me the thumbs up. And he learned us. Oh, we learned the to be verb is. And what else did we learn there? Uh, it looked like just one word, but that's okay. So we had a positive interaction with that dude. And uh, journey milestone for, oh, we learned five words. So he actually taught us more words than that. We just didn't see all of the words display that we learned. So he did teach us a few words. And this door is locked. You need Atlas Plus uh, V2 to get into that one. And now this is what you can do. This is a Viking observatory. So whenever you see like this cool hollow table like this, this is not a uh, table where you sit down and play Pac-Man. This is an observatory and a beacon sent from long ago from a distant system awaits my response. Three numbers are visible above an empty input box. I think I know what comes next. So these are like little puzzles where you just have to observe the changes in the numbers. And so it goes 1702 and then 7021 and then 0217. And um, you can see that the numbers are shifting one place to the left. So, like, the 7 becomes the first number, and then the 0 becomes the first number moving to the left. And now the 2, it needs to be 2170. Zero. And if you get it right, it says, I discover a location within the distant stars. So your puzzle is going to be different each time. You just kind of have to observe the three iterations and figure out like what's going on so we got some kind of a signal detected and we can go check it out it's over there 
Oh, and there's also some encrypted navigation data. And you see how we, we just improved our Viking rank to accomplish two out of nine. So we've actually, by doing that right there and talking with the Vikings successfully, we have kind of boosted our relations with them. Now that it's daytime, though, on this desert world, check it out. It's only cold at night. So this world is not hazardous to us during the daytime. It's just like a you know, normal desert where um, it could get really cold at nighttime and it's hot during the day. But this world isn't even prohibitively hot during the day unless perhaps there's a storm going. So this is really exciting that this is a, a reasonable world for us. And I think I'm going to build my base here because I love finding a starter place where I don't have to use hazard protection. Now, I'm immediately going to start scanning everything. This is a new world, so all of the flora, fauna, it's all new. I don't know any of it. And you scan it to just make money, which who doesn't like making units? But also, you're going to get the access to the secondary resources that are available from these things. If there is one, yep, this gives you dihydrogen in addition to ferrite dust. So just check this out. Now look over here. Immediately, I see that there's a knowledge stone. I'm just going to, you know, rock it up here and get this bad boy. What you got? And we learned the Viking word for two. So we're learning some really, really useful. Like sometimes, I believe that the game does go in a predetermined order of usefulness or at least frequency of use for the words. I'm going to just identify this. Sometimes in the past, it would be like just some random word that you would never use, and it was kind of not very valuable. But yeah, we learned, you know, the word, uh, the to be verb is, and particle two, you know. Um, so these are really, really useful uh, things to learn. And that rock, oh, there's an animal over here. Look at this guy. And it's like worm, man, all right? Now, you always want to check the sky, see if there's any animals flying up up in the sky. And now, I can push start, and I can go over to uh, Discoveries, and I can see that on this planet, there are only seven fauna. And we've already got three minerals discovered, and two of the floor of the plants. So, I'm going to rename this world. And um, I'm just going to call it Incompetent Desert. And I'm going to have a little fun with this. We're going to call it the Desert Dream. Because it's not really a dream, but for us, it's such an improvement. I mean, the last world we were on, the last planet, was actively hostile with the toxic environment that was just beating us down. Now, this world, it gets a little chilly. Yeah, all right, nighttime, sure. But during the day, it's great. So now it's time for us to figure out where we want to build our base. Now... You can see that we have a lot of stuff that we just marked on our map and uh, on the compass. And I want to go to see if I can find where the observatory pointed us because that could be useful. Now, another thing I could show you too is, um, oh my gosh, there's like a, look at this animal. It's like a mushroom man. Oh my goodness, what a strange looking dude. He's kind of like a mushroom hydra. I got to get closer to this guy. So, also, as the game has changed over the years, the animals have looked more and more interesting. Uh, we already have... Oh, no, we don't have this guy scanned. That That's, like, running along the, the ground like that. God, this is like the, the Tremors. It's like we're playing Tremors. Look at this mushroom guy. I mean, what a curious-looking fellow. He's like the hamburger helper, kind of. Um... You know, he looks like a white glove with mushroom tip fingers. Very interesting. All right. Oh, more animals that we don't have. They're going underneath the ground. You can see them. They're running away. Let's see if we can scan one of them. You have to kind of be a little bit closer. Uh, we got it. Sweet. Oh, there's a flying thing. Push R3 to zoom in. And just try to keep your thing pointed at it while you scan it. Okay, we got another flying guy. So any red dot that you see is a is an animal we haven't yet identified. But check this out now. Look at discoveries. We have five out of seven. So if we discover all of them, 
we will get a big boost uh, of nanites as a reward for like a completion activity. So this world, the animals have just been right here by where we landed, which is amazing. Here's another knowledge stone. So welcome to No Man's Sky and just the unbelievable fun of options that you can do. This is a game where I get so easily distracted. Ooh, the Viking word for death. That's a little... That's dark, but you need to know that. Here's another knowledge stone. I can just get completely sidetracked by just exploring the procedural planets. Okay, and we learned the word for I. You could see, um, you know, there's a cargo drop. There's health restorative. Uh, there's damaged machinery. There's another knowledge stone over that way. Just amazing. And do I see any new animals? Nope, I see a bunch of green paws everywhere. But we're going to keep looking for it. Now, another thing is, if you go into your discoveries, if you want to know, and you click Fauna, you can see we've discovered these five. But these two down here, we haven't discovered. And it says, underground, uncommon, underground, always active. So what that means is, we need to find a cave to go in to find those because they don't live on the surface of the planet. They live underground. Now you can either find a cave. Oop, life support is low. I'm just going to push down. And I'm going to uh, click recharge equipment. I'm going to go to my life support. And I am going to use a life support gel. Now I'm using life support gel. And we traveled 8,000. So we learned a little bit. Let's identify this. Sweet. All right, we got all this stuff figured out. I'm using the life support gel because it's a full recharge. Ooh, is this a cave? Oh my gosh, it is. Ah, it's not a very deep one, it doesn't look like. Um, cave marrow is, you know, something you can mine. Oh, we're on the wrong tool. Let me push triangle, go to my mining beam. And you can get marrow bulbs has a little bit of value perhaps so you we're looking for a cave to find the animals this started to look like a cave but sometimes you'll find this where they don't go very deep now i've got a few marrow bulbs let me go into my inventory and show you these are worth uh 41 each 820 for what we got so not super valuable not bad but you know not like insane and let's identify this all right i am just going because uh, I saw a knowledge stone. There it is. Now you'll notice as I want to get around quickly, my sprint, my jetpack, they're so bad. They, they run out of charge so quickly, but this is something we can upgrade very easily. Okay, so now we know how to say I and you. We're learning some very, very useful words. Oh, this guy. Is that, oh, we know that guy? Okay. Man, do we? I mean, oh my goodness, look at that thing. It looks like a walking beholder. So as I was saying, the animals are so much more varied than when the game first started. They were pretty plain and simple, you know, um, and now they are just like have all kinds of interesting things happening with them. Uh, this is a cave, but again, it does well. Well, wait a minute. What do we got? What do we got here? Scan. Oh, there it is. There's one. Red dots. Red dots. Let me see. It's down here deeper. Look, there it is, mushroom guys. Oh, it's like tentacle man. Okay. So that's six out of seven. So it's uncommon. Sometimes it'll say that the animal is rare, and that's going to be like a pain to try to find. You know, it, it, it's... I will give up sometimes if it's like super hard to find. Oh, what's this? Okay. But because it says it's just uncommon, I'm completely willing to just explore a little bit in here. And see if we can find it, because uh, the payoff is, is really worth it. 
And it's cool. Like, I like spelunking in this game. Look at this interesting cave. It's, it's kind of lit. We have our torch on automatically. Uh, you can turn that off, by the way, by going, pushing down and, you know, going into your utilities. And you can, you can turn it off if you want to see the full darkness. I'm just going to go back to utilities and, and turn that back on. Wow, this is a huge cave system. Okay, there's a way out right there. Just kind of poking around. Now, I don't know where the life form is going to be, like, within this cave. What is this stuff? This is subterranean relics. Oh, these can be fun. How much inventory space do I have? I only have um, five slots available, which is not many. But we can always dump stuff that we don't need. Here's some relics over here. So let's go get these relics so I can show you what these are like. Now this guy right here is a hazardous flora. Which means like he will kind of explode if we get close to it. But you can... Um, wow, look at that thing flying through. But we already know what it is. You can use your mining beam to just blast this guy from far away so that he won't explode on you. And he actually gives you oxygen, which is pretty sweet if you're running low on life support. Now, these are the subterranean relics right here. And you can just pick these up, these vortex cubes. And I'm going to go in my inventory and show you. These stack to 10. They're worth 5,800 each. So they um, are a good way to make some cash. Not the best, but I mean, you know, I'm not going to be upset with finding some vortex cubes. And I don't know where I am, you know. Oh, there's some more Vortex Cubes. I'm just exploring around looking for animals. But don't worry ever about getting lost because I'm going to show you something really cool here. Let's look around. Oh. Hazardous Flora. going to blast these guys. I'm still looking for that life form. I feel like we're going to find it somewhere. Oh, another hazardous life form. Okay. Okay. And I just use my scanner because as soon as the animal that we're looking for appears, the red dot will be visible somewhere. Even if, like, we can't actually see it, you, you can kind of see through walls, through the ground. It'll just show up. But we haven't found it yet. And now we can check our discoveries and just, there's more information. So let me see this thing. Um, it's always active. Okay, so that's good. So sometimes it'll be, like, only nighttime or, you know, some other time that's conditional but this thing says it's always active so it should be around if we get lucky but maybe not on this part of the planet here's some more cubes now we could pick these up and remember we can always just dump stuff into our starship to save it for later and let's see these animals are just like flying and tunneling through Just gonna kind of jet myself over here. Run, sweeping around, scanning everywhere. Wow, look at this! Interesting. This is like a a Venus human trap, so we're gonna stay away from that. So now this like environment almost seems like we're not in a cave because there's hardly anything here it looks like a giant worm tunnel or something you know the sandworms from dune they're gonna rip out at any moment okay uh let's see anything anything not yet. Oh, underground creature. Where are you? We're looking for you. So, 
Wow, I mean, these tunnels are awesome. If you say to yourself, you know what, I'm looking for this and I'm not finding it, right? By the way, I'm going to get all of this condensed carbon. This is great. This uh, can be used for our life support and for our multi-tool, obviously. And just building lots and lots of things need carbon. Oh, looks like some dihydrogen down here, too. I'm going to pick that up. Okay, cool. All right. So you can see there's the way out there. But this is what I want to show you. If you ever are in a cave and you're like, I want out. I don't like this. Push triangle. Go to your uh, terrain manipulator and be on mining mode. And then just kind of aim slightly up and just start digging yourself a stairway out. This is what's so great about the terrain manipulator is that you can just blast your way up or down to get around. And eventually we will arrive at the surface. Remember, even if our terrain manipulator is running out, you see how it's at like 9%? Just push down, recharge equipment, terrain manipulator, and you can use ferrite, but don't use silicate powder at the very end because there's really um, not many uses at all for silicate powder. Ferrite has so many uses. You want that for all kinds of things, metal plates, etc. All right, we're going to jump, and now we're out. We made it. So we got out of the tunnel we were in. Look at that guy. There's the beholder dude I was talking about. I mean, what a crazy-looking thing. And, you know, you can sweep around, see if there's anything. Down here, looks like uh, some supplies. We can find uh, a little projectile ammunition, which, okay, fine. Uh, I'm going to switch back to my mining beam now. Oh, now it's stone. It's night, right? You see our thermal protection falling? You say, where's my ship? How do I get back? One thing you can, of course, do, ooh, pathetic, that's not good, is just go back into the tunnel. You'll be safe there. But another really cool thing you can do, wow, listen to that music, all right, is push down, and you can go to summon vehicle, push X, and then you can just click right here, summon incompetent starter ship. Um, we don't have an exo craft or anything else to summon. We just have our starter ship, and push X. And if you, as long as you have launch fuel for your thrusters, your ship just comes in. It's like, hi, you summoned it. And now you can just hop in and get hazard protection. Now, if I go to my ship, um, oh, that didn't even use launch thruster. I, I swear that used to use launch thruster, but it, it didn't. So I don't know what, maybe they made it so it takes nothing to do that. Um, but yeah, we just summoned this to us. And we can now get around the planet. So I love this. Now I'm going to transfer some. My inventory is filling up. I'm going to start transferring these to my starship. So I just push triangle. And I'm going to push triangle again. And I push triangle. And you can see that my starship has 23 free slots. I push triangle again. And I'm going to put this. Uh, what else do I want to put over there that I'm not really using? These marrow bulbs. Sure. Uh, the salvage data. Yes, yes, yes. You can have that. The... Um, Hept, heptaploid, heptaploid, you can have that. Uh, the navigation data, I might need that. Um, I'm going to give you my cobalt, I suppose, for now. And you can have, uh, mm, I need a lot of this other stuff. Alright, this is pretty good. We freed up a lot of space. You could kick as much as you want to it. Now, while I'm in here and just chilling in my ship, I always like to just recharge my stuff. So I'm just going to give some oxygen. By the way, when you, when I push X to recharge my life support, notice how with oxygen it says 19, and then in parentheses it has, says 123. That means that I'm going to use 19 of my um, 123 oxygen to recharge to 100%. So it's, you can know like how many you're going to actually use. I'm going to go to my starship, and now we can recharge the pulse engine 
with tritium, but we don't have any, or pyrite. So we do want to be careful with that, but we can get tritium pretty easily. Now, I want to make... I'm going to craft a starship launch fuel, but we need metal plating to do that, which means we need ferrite dust, which we don't have a lot of. So I'm just going to jump out and get some ferrite dust so that we can have our ship charged up. Now remember, you can just use your scanner like so to find basic stuff, but for ferrite dust, we're just looking for ah, what we see right here, rocks. Use your scanner. You could see that this right here on the left of our scanner screen, it's it's called uh, now left flight and it is 42% metal and it gives pure ferrite which actually we kind of want ferrite dust so what about these little rocks here we go these little rocks are a little bit better for pure ferrite or ferrite dust rather this is what I want oh un we have an unidentified item here let's get this get my credits there we go Sweet. And now, I'm going to go into my... I'll just do it in my inventory. I'm going to craft metal plating, like so. And then now I can just craft starship launch fuel, like so. I'm going to go to my starship. Uh, it's a little bit too far away, actually, to recharge from here. So I get closer. Ouch. It's going to hurt. Remember, if you don't damage one of your health units, like the circle with the plus symbol in it, you'll recharge the health that you lost. So it's like a temporary pain. Uh, we got an achievement here. Drifter. Okay. And I'm going to just go ahead and get in my ship. And push the middle button. And I am going to... Now, I'm not going to charge my ship. I thought I was going to, but I want to wait till it's at zero to get the full bang for our buck. Because this will completely charge. And if we use it now, we kind of waste some of the fuel. So I'm just going to push triangle push triangle put it into our ship and we're good to go so we're gonna build a base at least a temporary base right here on this world but I do want to perhaps put it oh wow look at all this vegetation of these cactuses those uh, at least I feel like they used to be worth a good amount of money now they want us to go oh the ancient ruin is actually off-planet where they'd like us to travel uh, from the observatory so you know that's a thing that we could do but oh here's some uh, metal right here that we could harvest and I'm just gonna like right here on this giant plane I'm just gonna build our base you can put yours wherever you want and you can move it now we don't have enough for the launch thruster so I now will load the fuel in there to get it done. I'm gonna then go over here. Let's just see what metal this actually is down here. It is a magnetized ferrite. Okay, that's actually quite nice. So we're gonna go ahead and just get this. I'll just push um, triangle to switch to my terrain manipulator and we can just start vacuuming up magnetized ferrite which is basically a refined version of ferrite so it's like you take you've got ferrite dust and then you can go up to pure ferrite and then uh, i believe the next level is this what we've got right here this magnetized ferrite so i'm just gonna you know get a bunch of this together because this might prove useful for us and um, what we can check in a moment I like to just run around in the circle but remember you can just hold this down the mining beam does not overheat so you can just blast 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 and collect all of the resources within one of these ore deposits with your terrain manipulator and the silicate powder is good for recharging all right, so I think we've done a pretty reasonable job here of getting it all. You know, there's a few pieces here and there that we could gather if we wanted and try to get out. There we go. And push this and these. 
Uh, we'll just give us carbon. But anyway, I like being up high with my base, and this rock is kind of a cool feature to be next to. There's these little animal guys that are just tunneling through. So we're going to build the base computer. I'm going to go into, I'm um, just going to push up to the build menu, and we're going to select base computer. And let's just put it down right here, R2. All right, and this is the Imoluto Colony. And it says new guide entry, base construction. You can just push options or start to go to this screen and, and read further information about a base. But for now, we're just going to kind of interact with this. So we can walk over here and hold square to interact with the base computer. And it's searching cartographic archives. Universal Archive Search reveals no prior claims on this site. Sonar test confirms site is suitable for construction. Claim site? Yes. Claim the base. So, pew. Oh, wow. Look at that. There's like a freighter going overhead as we're claiming this site. Awesome. Okay, so now that we claim the site, it says um, search the computer archives for our main quest. So we're going to do this. And accessing log from previous user. Entry 4925D follows. Storms sweeping across, but construction supplies low. Depositing shelter plans while need to back soon. Extract the plans. And look at this. We've learned now how to make a wall, a door, a floor, a ceiling and a plant decoration out of timber. So we push return and we see the quest panel here or the tutorial panel, and it shows you an awesome base that you could make. It'll offer hazard protection, which is vital on a hostile world. And you can just do all sorts of fun stuff within it. Put facilities, hang out, and we will learn new blueprints to gain access to new functionality, portals, um, all sorts of things, and we can store our possessions here. And this is something that the game didn't used to have, but it's so great because it allows you to kind of create a home base instead of always being adrift in your ship. So from here, it says, Construct a shelter for protection against hazards. Build foundations from timber floor panels. So we're going to push up, and now the build menu has expanded. So you can see we have timber structures. You can push R1 advanced technology and R1 again for lighting and flags. Now we want to build these floor panels. So we're just going to select it with, you have to put the cursor over it and it takes 10 carbon to build this. So we can build one. And once we have it selected, you'll see that it just kind of like projects out of our scanner and it shows a green outline of where we can build this. And if it's green, it means we can build it. And if it's red, it means we can't. So we can put this, you know, wherever we want. And then you can flatten the ground with your terrain manipulator to make a nice place. But I'm just going to kind of start building it right here. I'm going to push R2. And the game kind of smartly snaps things together. So the next floor panel can go over here. And I'm going to put one there. And we can build one also right here. And build is... Oh boy. So even though this place is normally hospitable, there's an incoming firestorm. So this is going to make the temperature roasty. And we got, um, there's some ships over there flying. The base computer is online. I'll just go ahead and make a 3x3 three three base for now. And there you go. And I'm going to just push circle to close this up. And we can build some walls. So you select a wall, and then you can just throw this up. Now maybe, push circle, go back. Maybe you want, um, you know, a wall with a window. Now we don't have the plan for that yet. So we're just going to build basic stuff. Our thermal protection is falling in the storm. And we're running out of carbon. So you could see we're getting devastated. So I'm just going to wait out the storm. Look at this. You could It's just like it's hard to see. It's melting us. Now, if our base was built, we could just be inside our base and be safe from this storm, but unfortunately, right now, we cannot. Here we go. So we can hang out here 
and be entirely safe from the storm. Just wait for it to pass. Just gonna kind of look around. That animal is mushroom guy. I don't know how he's feeling about this storm. And I'm actually going to get out because I can probably handle some of this and get back in if I need to. But we need a bunch of carbon to finish building our base. So let's go ahead and try to find carbon. You know, if possible. And so these cactus guys over here will give it to us. But it's really, really hard to see And we're only going to be able to stay out for a bit. And I'm just going to go back to my ship. Now another thing we can do. I'm going to pull out my refiner. And just put it down right there. I'm going to use this. And fuel supply. You know, we can just put some condensed carbon in there. And if I put in... Um, You can try putting stuff in to see what it will yield. Okay, the storm is clearing great. So if I put in condensed carbon, you can see that I can actually turn condensed carbon back into carbon so that we can kind of downcycle this and use it for our base. And for every one that we put in, it's a one to two ratio, we get two carbon. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And in seven seconds... You know, you don't have to do all of it. You can split up the stack. But this is just going to help us build all of the stuff that we need for our base. And then we can just take this and push triangle, put it in our exosuit. And leave this here for now. And continue working on our base. So I'll push up. And I'll go over to this. And I'm going to uh, select timber walls. And see how much we've got. Uh-huh. And now notice how you can cycle the part. Like if you want to just have one of these, you know, as a decorative element. Uh, it does take more carbon. But you can cycle through the different wall types. I definitely want to put my door um, in the middle here where it's like uh, something we can access. But we need ferrite to do that. So... Uh, pure ferrite, actually. And that's no problem. We can easily build that. But we also need to go back and we can build uh, a roof. And you can build the rounded timber roof. Um, or you can build the uh, flat timber roof. And they use the same amount of resources. I like this rounded one. Looks cool. And you can always just dismantle this and redo it. So, you know, you can... Once you get new pieces and things like that that you want, cannot build in valid position. Yes, you can. I know you can. I trust you. All right, let's go ahead and kind of just walk around until there we go. We get the right place to snap. Oh, not right there. Okay, so when you build it and you don't want it there, you can push square to um, edit right and you can just push r2 and you can actually just move it so instead we can then kind of instead of dismantling it just move it to the right location now i'm going to push square and go back to build mode instead of edit mode i'm just going to keep trying to pop in these roof tiles correctly and then we're out of uh the resources that we need no 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 we're not it just it was a placement thing now we're out of ferrite dust and that's pretty easy for us to get so you can see our base is coming along. We need pure ferrite and we need ferrite dust. Now remember, we got all this magnetized ferrite. Well, possibly we can downcycle this. So what if I put in magnetized ferrite? It'll go down to pure ferrite and it'll give us a ton of it. Now, if we don't want all of it, okay, we can... Um, just decide to like split up the stack so I can transfer and you can push left and right to change the stack size so let's say I just want to do like a hundred of it I'm going to do 115 I'm going to put it into my exosuit and then I'm going to transfer this much 
I'm going to turn this into pure ferrite. This will help us make our door. And then we can downcycle the pure ferrite into um, ferrite dust to continue making our base. We can also, while we're waiting, just kind of mine some of this stuff. And Oh, it's unidentified. Might as well scan it, get some extra money. By the way, um, something cool is to just push start and check out on the discovery screen. You can see how much money we have so far. We have 23,000. We have 191 nanites, so we're kind of building up. Another thing I want to mention on the discovery on the discovery screen is you do get a bonus for finding all of the animals, the fauna, but there is no bonus for finding the minerals and the flora. All right, I'm going to interact with this, and I'm going to take out the pure ferrite. And I'm just going to put this in my exosuit for just a moment so I can build the doorway to our base and then come back and turn this all into dust. Push up. And I'm going to select... Um, the timber angled door right here. Oh, we're low on carbon. Okay, no problem. No, well, there's cactuses all over the place. Let's blow these up and get some carbon. And you see we get a ton. It does take quite a bit of carbon to build these wood panels. Uh, but it's, you know, usually pretty reasonable to acquire it. Just got to go cut, that, cut down trees. Or in this case, cactuses. All right, and we're going to put a door right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to build the roof. And we did get enough ferrite dust already, so we might not even need to down cycle. And bam. So look at this. Now we have finished our base. You can just walk through your door. And, oh, no, there's a big hole missing. I was like, we've got it. No, we don't. And we need some ferrite dust. Okay. It was so close. Let's just get some right here. Break these rocks up. Oh, we got a geode. Just falling out of bed. We got a geode. Alright. Now, I'm going to put this in its place. If we can find it, uh, get it to snap. Sometimes it's a little bit awkward. And there we go. Almost had it. Oh, come on now. I know you wanna I know you wanna go there. Alright, if it's gonna be difficult, then I'm just gonna fly up. <laughs> I'm gonna try to. Come on. Come on, jetpack, work with me. Alright, let's fly up. Just hold X and go on the roof. And then from here, I should be able to build this pretty quickly. There it is. I'm going to close this up. And now when I go into this base, it's completely enclosed. And we have a shelter. So this is our first little base. Um, there's some light coming through here, which is confusing. Um, but for the most part, now we have a place to call home. And we could start building up from here. So everyone, I think this is a good place to end this episode. We've built our base. We're going to continue the quest and build this up. Look how awesome the wood paneling looks. We have found a new planet. Um, we are boosting up our discovery. We've learned how to use the mining tool to get out of caves, and we're doing beautifully. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're still finding this series to be fun and helpful. Take care.